Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another one of our EK and Trackside Live daily wrap features here. We are at the Challenge of the Americas round number four Sunday here in Phoenix, Arizona. We had a great day today and it was really everything we were hoping we could have. Just some great racing and new winners. That was one of the greatest things we saw. We talked about this weekend really being the turning point of the championship before we go to Sonoma for the finale. And what we got was some new winners and guys that have thrust themselves back into the championship chase. Exactly what we were looking for, some great racing. Senior, of course, a barn burner. We had some great racing in Tucson, the battles back and forth on the final laps. Well, we got that again today. It didn't happen yesterday, but today we definitely had it. A number of drivers were in the hunt for the championship, but it was Mesa Murata who was able to find his way to the front of the pack and then stretch away when everybody else was battling back behind him. For Mason, a fantastic drive. The Ryan Perry Motorsports driver scoring a huge victory. The fourth driver to win this year. We've had four different winners in Senior Max. You know, one of the greatest things with this Senior Max category is it's so competitive. There's so many great drivers. We had three winners coming into today. We got a brand new one as well. Four winners now. Mason Murata, you're finally able to break through, get that victory. You've been fast all year, but to finally get that win, it's got to feel like the monkey off your back. Yes, it feels amazing to finally get that win. It just uh, shows all our preparation that we've been putting into this year is really paying off. It seems like in the past years we haven't really been putting our full effort into our program. Yeah. But this year we've really been preparing and make sure that we are ready for every race. And it's really showed this weekend and in Tucson, even though we had a little bit of bad luck. But uh, this weekend was good for us. It's got to be cool when you're the guy, you know, when people come in here, you come off the trail and they're always watching you. You're one of the guys you watch. You know, you got a great team behind you with Ryan Perry. You guys are making things happen right now. Yeah, everything's going really well. You know, it just comes back to preparation. You know, even though I can't make it uh, Thursday practice like all the other drivers because of school, we uh, we still come, you know, two weekends before and make sure that we're really prepared for the weekend. You know, get our engine, uh, chassis, everything tuned so we are ready for the weekend. The victory obviously puts you back into the championship yeah. chase or firmly into the championship chase. What are your thoughts going to, to Sonoma? Sonoma? Is, right. it, is it a track you like? Yeah, I haven't been there in probably three or four years, yeah. but the championship is so close and all the drivers are really good. You know, I, I think it's... Uh, like 10 points between all of us right now so yeah we have to really be on top of our game and it's going to be the same situation in Sonoma where I won't be able to be there on Thursday so I'm sure we'll be uh, there a couple weekends before really preparing for that race and we'll see how it all comes down in that final race who knows. Hey, congratulations on a big win today. Thank you. The DD2 category not a lot of drivers, four of them, right? We know it's just a small field, but they're all so super close together. Saber Cook has got two victories. Michael Olavi has got a victory, but Matt Jaskel had not yet been able to break through. He wasn't sure if he was going to go to Sonoma. They needed to be in the championship hunt. Well, he came out strong in the main event. He and Cook got together actually in the pre-final and took him out early. Matt was able to come back, started near the very tail, I think third or fourth for the start. But man, he came on strong, got into third, moved to second, and finally went by Sabre Cook to take over the lead. He becomes the third winner of the four drivers we have in the DD2 category, and it's put Mac back into this championship hunt in DD2. We hope to see him at Sonoma, and if we do with PSL West, it'll probably be on a Burrell Art chassis. That'll be interesting. Matt's been a CRG guy all his life. Throw him on the Italian red chassis, we'll see what happens. You know, in the DD2 category, we've had a couple of winners already. Saber Cook, Michael Olavia already scoring wins. Matt Jaskell had the big goose egg coming into this weekend, but your program just keeps kind of coming together. I know it came together late for Tucson. You guys are just kind of getting things dialed in now, and today's victory obviously really big for you. Yeah, it's about time, right? I yeah. mean, uh, you know, I think, you know, I've always had a little bit of bad luck. If I, we always joke, if I didn't have bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. So uh, we always talk about testing, but it just never really happened. <laughs> so Tucson was a test. First time on the DD2, I think everybody saw that we were just kind of sorting things out, and still the speed was there, you know. But we had some bad luck with things not being put together right. And uh, and obviously today was a little bit rough. Uh, I told Sabre, she came up and apologized for the, the hit, and I mm -hmm. said, you know, I've been dumped by girls, but not that hard in a while. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, it, that that kind of sucked, obviously being taken out in the yeah. heat, but uh, we pulled it together for the for the, and I think we made a good choice pulling in, saving some tires, and that helped for the main. So, so your thoughts going to Sonoma? We, you may go to Sonoma, you may not. We're not quite sure at this point. Yeah, I'm not trying. To, I don't want to be pessimistic, just being a realist. Yeah. And I haven't looked at the points. I don't really know the point structure. So we're gonna sit down. We're gonna take a look at everything. And uh, look, I mean, I, I'm not a kid anymore. You know, I yeah. like. I think I am, but I'm. You know, just turned 30 years old. I I got responsibilities as far as work and motorsport stuff to pay my bills. So I need to see what's realistic. My focus, like I've said, is 
is really to do the pro tour. Yeah. I, I belong I belong in a shifter. That's where I'm good. That's what I want to do. This was more of just uh, a hope to maybe get a mm -hmm. ticket to the World Finals, but just to stay in a go kart. Yeah. So I need to just I need to do the prudent thing. Look at the look at the budget. Look at the uh, the points and see if it makes sense to go to Sonoma. Of course, I want to be there. I want to race. I like Sonoma, uh, but we just got to see what's going to be the right thing hey, to do. Whatever it is, good luck at it. Yeah. Hey, thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. There you go, Matt Jaskell. Just like DD2, we were looking to have some more guys jumping into the championship fight in the Masters Max category. John Crow's been strong here all weekend in Phoenix, but he's always lacked that little bit. They've been working on this car since the first time they got onto the asphalt on Friday. Thursday practice might have helped him out because he was really kind of behind the eight ball trying to chase Paul uh, Benilla throughout the entire weekend. But today, he was perfect from start to finish. Qualified on the pole, won the pre-main, and then was able to get out in front of Benilla and actually take off, score the victory, get that fast lap for the full 120-point score. This changes everything. Benilla, Crow, both in the hunt right now. They're only separated by five points heading to Sonoma. These guys have raced each other for years. They know each other. When we go to wine country, it's going to be a battle for sure to see who gets that ticket to run DD2 Masters at this year's Grand Finals. We have ourselves a pretty solid battle for the championship here right now in this Masters Max category. John Crow, you knew coming in here you had to step it up because obviously Paul Bonilla, two big wins in Tucson. You had to get something done. He goes and wins yesterday on you, but you had some points. Today, almost a perfect day. You have to feel good. Yeah, no, I feel great. Uh, we knew that coming here that uh, we had to hit home runs every at bat, basically. And yesterday was a little disappointing at the pole and then to lose in the main. But, you know, we just got beat. And my mechanic, Josh, uh, we thought about it last night. We changed a lot of stuff, and it, uh, you know, we hit a big grand slam today, technically. So, yeah, we needed it, we did it, and really looking forward to Sonoma. You know, it really is a progression throughout the weekend, isn't it? You weren't here to practice Thursday, so you, you dropped the car on the on the track on Friday. you got to work all weekend to, to, to win on Sunday. Definitely. And I'll tell you, the first three sh sessions we were, I mean, it was bad. Wow. I don't complain much, but I was like, I, I don't know. But... We made some changes. You know, Josh, again, just did the right things, and it was amazing. And really, today was a statement. I think we're, we're looking good. We're in it. Thoughts on Sonoma? Uh, I'm excited. <laughs> I can't get her soon enough, but I'm also nervous. So, But that's what makes it exciting. It's karting, and uh, I love it. Congratulations. Thank you. One of the themes of the weekend, really one of the themes of the entire series has been some rivalries we have developing. You know, we've got the battle in Masters Mac between between uh, John Crow and Paul Bonilla. We've got the DD2 battle, of course, between Saber Cook and Matt Jaskell. We've got a great one here in the junior category as well. Stingray Rob and Nick Bruckner, both easily two of the best young junior drivers in the country right now, and they are going at it tooth and nail here in the Challenge of the Americas. Nick stepped up yesterday, had a really good day, and scored the victory as Stingray had to come from the tail of the field in the pre-main. Today, though, Stingray was good from the very beginning. Qualified on pole, won the pre-main, and was able to pull, hold Nick off and actually run away to the victory in the main event. So that's big for Stingray, but Nick was able to have that one little bit. He got the fast lap of the race. That's a five-point bonus. So Nick was able to scrap back a little bit. What this has done has blown things wide open in the junior category as well. Stingray's right in the hunt. And, of course, Nick, still with the point lead, will be the guy to watch when we go to Sonoma. These two drivers, two of the best in the country, head-to-head -head in Sonoma for the grand finals ticket in Junior Max. Well, a fantastic day here today for Stingray Rob. Yesterday, a good battle for you. You had to start at the tail of the field of pre-main. You worked to third and then finished second. Today, it was all you, though. Qualified on pole, win the pre-main, win the main. It's got to feel good to come in here and really recover from yesterday. Yeah, it was It was a really good race. We had a, a big chassis change yesterday. We, it, we worked, though. We got the job done yesterday, got the second, and then today, got the win. You put the new chassis underneath you. Did it? Did it you need some time to, to adjust to it for today? Yeah, we, it, we had to change some setup on the cart, but it was really good. We got it figured out. Obviously a great start to the year. You're winning races on the East Coast, on the West Coast. You and Nick, though, have a pretty good little rivalry going on right now. How's that feel? It feels pretty good. You know, it's nice to have a competitor out here. It's I can race on both coasts. Hey, congratulations. Well done. Thank you so much. In the Mini Max and the Micro Max categories, we saw some, some great racing and a new winner in the, in the Mini Max class. We had so many new winners here today. Peyton Durant was able to step up, actually took advantage of an incident between Sebastian Alvarez and Griffin Dowler to take over the lead. But once he got there, he really took control of the race, was able to walk away. He had Jack Crawford putting a lot of pressure on him, but Peyton settled down 
relaxed a bit from the fast lap of the race and was able to score his first ever Mini Max race win here in the Challenge of the Americas. It's big for Peyton. It puts him back in the championship as well. I can't wait to see what happens in Sonoma. You look over to the, uh, the Micromax category, rather, it's a totally different story. Diego LaRock has been the driver to beat all year long. He's got four race wins. He was challenged big time today by Leland Honeyman, but in the end, it was Diego again stepping up, using his confidence, his patience, and he was able to score a win with a, a last lap pass to score the victory in Micro. He's essentially got the championship already locked up in that category, but he'll still be in Sonoma looking to see if he can't sweep the weekend like others have done before him. It's going to cap off what's been a great weekend here in Phoenix, folks. Us guys like David and I, you know, living up in the north and in the, where it's super cold right now, it's nice to be here in 70 and 80 degree weather in Phoenix. Obviously, the, the club itself, always doing a great job. They're always so hospitable. We want to thank everyone for, for allowing us to come to the Phoenix Kart Racing Association. This was a great weekend. It turned the tables. We figured it was going to happen. Now we go to Sonoma, middle of March, championships up for grabs, and of course, those four tickets to go to the grand finals. That is obviously the coveted prize that those four drivers are all looking for here in 2015. Folks, on behalf of David Cole, this has been Rob Howden. Thank you very much for joining us for another Daily Wrap.